Hi there guys. So I um, just posted this piece on Facebook and a lot of people really liked it and were excited by it. And so, you know, I can really tell I'm a teacher because the first thing I think of is, oh my goodness, I want to show people how to make this. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. And uh, I'm just going to show you that this is actually not super difficult to do and I'm going to break it down for you guys and I hope you enjoy this little lesson. So um, I did this one on cardboard and I have to tell you I started making this with my daughter. She was finger painting, my three-year-old, and I wasn't even expecting to make anything of substance. <laughs> I um, was just playing around and I was smearing paint around and all of a sudden these horses kind of appeared. <laughs> And it's just on a piece of cardboard because, like I said, I wasn't expecting to create anything, you know, quote-unquote serious. So, anyway, I ended up really liking them and um, I'm excited to show you guys how to make them. So, I don't have a piece of cardboard, but I have just a really basic 8x10 um, piece of uh, a canvas board. And these are super inexpensive and they're really great. And I've got some colors. I picked out some similar colors that I use. I don't know if this is exactly what I use because honestly I don't remember. Um, but I've got the cadmium red. I've got yellow ochre. This is a Martha Stewart paint called Mermaid Teal. This is kind of a, an off-white. It's called Wedding Cake. Um, and I also have, this one's called Pool. I think I used these colors. And then I also have, this is uh, by Senlier, and this is the Indigo. And that's that beautiful uh, dark blue that I love. So, the other thing I have is my heavy body white acrylic, titanium white acrylic paint. So I'll be using that too. And then I just have some assorted brushes and a palette. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make these little horses. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is just get my paints out and then I'll show you what the next step is. Now guys, you could do this with any colors that you want. You certainly don't have to uh, use these colors at all. Use your favorite colors. You could make this super neutral if you wanted. You could go super colorful. It's totally up to you. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start rubbing paint on here. And I think I'm gonna start with my cool colors. So I'm just gonna take the teal. And this is really just about getting color on the board and just getting yourself going. You'll see very quickly that this technique is very forgiving and you really can't mess it up. The only thing that you need to be aware of is that if you're using um, cool colors and warm colors, you won't want to mix them unless you're going for you know a very neutral color because anytime you mix warm and cool you're gonna get mud. Now you might be after mud so that's okay but if you want that pure bright color then stay away from mixing the warm and the cool and that's why I'm doing the blue and the teal first because I know that those two will play nicely together. And we won't have any mud appearing. You can see I'm moving the color around the canvas so think about you know repeating the color and moving it around. Your eye likes to th see things in uh, odds typically so think about that maybe um, spreading it around three times or five times I'm kind of not even paying attention to that too much. I'm just making sure I move it around. All right, so I've wiped off my fingers pretty much, and I'm gonna go into the warm colors now, but first I'm gonna dry this, actually. If you do happen to get mud, don't worry about it. Remember, this is paint. You can paint over what you don't like and keep what you do like. So don't, you know, stress out too much. If, you run into some mixing issues. You can see how putting that yellow ochre right next to that teal really activates it. Here comes that red. It's a gorgeous cadmium red. 
very striking, very powerful, really pretty. Now remember, this is just the first layer. You're going to be covering most of this. Don't get attached. And you can see, because I mixed that blue and that red, I'm going to get that purpley color. It's not really something I'm totally after. So, no big deal. I'm going to dry this and I'm going to add one more layer of color. It's relatively dry. I'm going to hit it with some fresh color here. This step can be very relaxing. Let your mind wander, put on some music. Play with the color. Now you do want to cover the canvas. Definitely make sure you get paint on the whole background because this is really going to serve us later. Okay, so I think that's good. I'm going to let that dry. Okay guys, so this is pretty dry now. Now I do like the form of the mama with the baby. So I'm gonna try and replicate that for you. I'm gonna set my horizon line. If we think about dividing the canvas up, we wanna think about thirds, right? So I'm probably gonna put my horizon line right about here. This is just a Marksall pencil. I'm just roughly drawing a line here. You could use a ruler if you want to. I probably should. I might just even use this. And now I've got my horizon line. Now, let's see if I can draw these horses again. Again, it was, some, it was a time when I wasn't trying to really make art. I was just hanging out with my daughter and the art just happened. Sometimes that's the best way for art to happen when we're not thinking about it too much, you know? So let's see if I can do this. And you can tell that these are pretty primitive shapes of the horse. They're definitely probably not anatomically correct or anything like that. But I'm not really after that. Don't worry about making mistakes at this point because we're going to be able to cover up a lot of this. And for the legs, I'm really just going to Again, it's an abstraction of the form. So I'm just gonna let them kind of do their thing, come down here. So now this is where it gets a little tricky where I've got the, the foal or the baby horse kind of right about here, looking in the same direction as the mama. I like how this shape, I like how the baby shape fits right in with the mama shape. And so I actually don't even fully uh, delineate the baby shape because it's, it's kind of echoed in the mom's shape. You could definitely trace a horse onto here if you wanted to. You didn't feel comfortable drawing your own horse. That's totally fine too. It's not what it's about. All right, so once you've got your basic outline of your horses, we are going to take our titanium white. And you could do this in any color again. This is just how I'm doing it. our white paint 
and start to paint out the silhouette that we just created. Now I have marks all pen uh, I have marks all pencil here, so it's going to look a little gray at first, but that's okay because I can build up the layers of white. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up capturing all that fun color within the outline of the horse. For those of you that took shades of white or even wing it, will recognize this technique. Kind of creating that crazy background and then being able to use it to your advantage to make an awesome shape emerge. This is also where you can take a stylus or something like this and you can draw into the paint and reveal some of the background, which is really fun. You can start to make those marks. Pretty soon you can start to see that what was, you know, this crazy background starts to make a little more sense because what it's doing is it's really allowing the beautiful forms of the horse to be silhouetted in color. And then you probably noticed in this one, where I've got color that comes through here, what I did is I just took a baby wipe, and I put my finger in it, and I just rub away. Just rub away where you want that color to come back through. make this, this white as opaque as you want to. You could keep building up layers or you can keep it a little bit transparent if you want more of the background to kind of peek through. I'm going to let that first layer dry and I'm going to put my blue on down below. So again this is the Senlier Blue Indigo. It's very rich dark blue and it's going to help to ground everything here. Don't forget to scratch into your paint when it's pretty wet. It's so easy to get caught up and want to move on to the next step but I don't want to miss out on Adding those fun marks in there. Same here. I love using this sort of scallop mark marking. So you want to do that while the paint is wet.
Whenever I scratch into paint, it reminds me of when I was a kid. And did you guys probably did this where you color like crayon all over a piece of paper and then you paint black paint over it and then you scratch into it. It's like, always reminds me of that, which I loved doing. You know what, I kind of like that red showing through in the corner, so I think I'm going to leave that. Okay, so you can see I've got my basic shapes of my horses. They're in there. And this is pretty fun. See, it's not too hard either. So while I'm waiting for the foreground and the background to dry, I can now go into the horse and decide if I want to add some more shapes inside the horse. You certainly don't have to do this, but I think it's kind of fun to go back in and refine some of the forms. So I think I'm going to make the mama's face pretty red, like I did in the other one. I think there's something really strong in her face being red. There is some, um, the Marxell pencil is muddying the paint a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to keep going and building up the color. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. I could have probably used uh, graphite or, you know, something less reactive, but no big deal. I do like the white stripe on her face in this one, so I think I'm going to do that on this one too. You can start to add some patterns into your horse. Maybe there's stripes or dots. Now that I've got some better color in there, I think I am going to go back in with the Marksall. I'm just I'm kind of delineate some of the lines. And I'm going to go back in with the white to further define the outline, the silhouette of the horse. You can see I'm being kind of rough with the, the line work. I want there to be some, you know, some uh, character to it. And guys, I don't know if you have a favorite brush, but I do. And many of you actually have heard me talk about it, but it's the number six um, Princeton Select 
round blender. I have like a ton of these and I love them. They're just a great um, heavy duty, you take a beating sort of paintbrush. And I just love them. They're great for blending. Kind of all purpose really. I mean they're small so they're not great for big paintings but for smaller work, art journal work, they're awesome. So I'm just going back in with a little bit more of the heavy bodied acrylic titanium white and further refining the silhouette of the horse horses. I can also go in with a brush and activate that Marxol pencil now, now that my colors are a little more solid. If I wanted to activate it, get a darker line, just hit it with some water. That's all you need to do. And it will become very black. So that's a great way to start to define the shapes more. And it adds almost a graphic feel to the horses. Watch for areas that you like and then other areas that you, that you may not like. Like for me, when I'm looking at this, I don't like how this line here is breaking that leg. It's, it's stopping the leg from going down. So I'm gonna just go right over that. I'm gonna intensify some of the paint down here. you can see, in not a lot of time, I've got my horses starting to come to life here. And you can keep going and adding more details. But what's great about it is that you've got your color palette, so you know that it works. Keep going till you reach a place where you like what's happening and you like the colors. It's a good idea to stand up and take a picture of it or put it across the room and have a look at it. I'm going to let it dry and then maybe add some last minute touches. So now that this is dry, I can really pump up the color where it was maybe a little bit transparent can come back in and hit it with some thicker paint to get more of that vibrancy.
actually going to come back in with this um, muted gold. It's Americana craft paint, and I just want a little bit brighter of an ochre. Yellow ochre is great, but I think I may have used this one in the last project. Okay guys, so I'm probably going to leave it there, but I just wanted to show you that this is the process that I used to make that other piece, and I hope you'll give it a try. It's really fun and a great little project to do, like I said, with your children, or it's a quick project. You could do it in the afternoon, and I hope you enjoy it. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye.